So which type of giver are you? We're going to look at a few different types of givers as found in the Gospels. Which, which one are you? Isn't it interesting that we all view money differently, right? We're all given a certain amount of money and we all view it differently. Some of us view it as control or security or entertainment or status. How do you view the, the dollar? When our girls were little, I gave them all the same amount of money and one of them would spend it on herself, one would be generous with it, and one would save it, right? Same family, same environment, but they, they viewed it differently. And to this day, they view money differently. How do you view money? Jesus builds his ministry on the generosity of some early followers. Let me talk to you about the different types of givers. The first group is the unsuspecting giver. It's the disciples and a group of women full of, Scripture tells us, evil spirits, diseases, and demons, right? Jesus calls them out of the marketplace, the disciples out of the marketplace, and he asks them to give. This is the foundation of his ministry. It, they weren't high-income earners, right? They weren't wealthy business individuals. This is the unsuspecting giver. You don't have to have a list of requirements in order to give. The second is the called giver. Jesus sends out in Luke chapter 9 and 10 a group of 80 people. And he sends them out and he tells them, hey, leave everything behind. Count the costs, leave everything behind, and go meet the needs of, of others. He specifically tells them, leave behind some things. There's some things, followers of Jesus, that we say no to so that we can support the work of the gospel. The compassionate giver. The compassionate giver. Are you familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan? He was willing to be inconvenienced during his day to care for a stranger that he may never see again. He was inconvenienced. He gave up his time. He, he cared for someone. Why? Because this person was in need. And he took care of the bill at the hotel, right? Cared for him, put him on his, his donkey and, and brought him into town. There's a reluctant giver. There's some of us, we've counted the costs and maybe we've, we've said no to giving at different times in our life. I think of the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and I think his heart, he wanted to follow Jesus. And, and Jesus knew how much value he put in his wealth. And so Jesus tests him and challenges him. Said, Are you willing to give everything up to follow me? And we're told in Scripture he, he walks away, right? I'm kind of thinking with his head down. And he, it's, it's a sad story, but he chooses not to give. The final one I want to share with you is the transform giver, Luke chapter 19. Uh, there's a story of a, of a man named Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And tax collectors were cheats, right? They, they would add a really high percentage upon what the Roman government was charging the Jews. And, and he was known as a traitor because he was a Jew and he was taxing his own people. And, and so he meets Jesus. And... After meeting Jesus, he goes back and he makes everything right. He repays those that he cheated, and he does so generously. And then he gives half of what he has to the poor, the transformed giver. As I share those, which one do you resonate with the most? Right, The unsuspecting giver, the called giver. Maybe it's the compassionate giver. You see a need and you, you can't walk you can't cross the street. You can't walk by. You, you have the gifts of mercy and, and compassion, the transformed giver. There's other givers in the Gospels. Those are just a few of them. Which one are you? And what's God calling you to either give up or to say no to or to, to say yes to? What's God calling you to do? I, I think of those disciples, those early disciples who were called. And, and recently I was reading, I, I heard the definition between adventure and quest. Now, I, I'm an adventure guy. I love going on adventures. I'll sign up for any adventure. I, I love taking risks. But the thing about an adventure is I come home. Or you go, you do something wild and crazy, but then you return home. But when it comes to a quest, 
you don't, you don't come home from. A quest you set off for and you never return back again. Now, which one of those is following Jesus? Is it an adventure that we do for a short time and then we return back to our old ways? No, it's a quest. Following Jesus transforms us, changes us for eternity. And we never go back. Uh, Lord willing, we, we are transformed, growing every day more and more like Jesus. And generosity, our bank account and our wallet is a part of that. It's changing. We're growing. We're being stretched. It hurts. I don't know about you. When I go to the gym, I leave. I hurt. And as we follow Jesus, there's some things in us that, that cause us to, it, it hurts. We're working muscles maybe we haven't used in a long time. I pray that you would have the courage and the boldness to do what God is asking you to do in, the, in this area of generosity. Let me pray. So, Father, God, I ask that you would continue to challenge our church, Boulder Mountain, to be a generous church, to meet needs within our body, but also within the community. For all of us, regardless where we're at on this journey, I pray that you would be gracious to us and you'd give us clarity on taking next steps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great rest of your week.